Brian, it's your turn to take the dog what? out. Brian. No, I can't. Brian. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. It's super loud over here. Here, try this. Brian, can you hear me this time? Yeah, I can hear you. This is great. Much better. Can you go wash my car? Oh. All right. With full modularity, 80 plus platinum efficiency, and whisper silent operation thanks to a semi-passive zero RPM fan mode, the new Fractal Design Ion Plus is the ideal power supply to make sure you don't miss what's going on in the world around you. Check out the link below to learn more. AMD's Navi line of graphics cards were generally positively reviewed including by me, on this very channel at the time of launch. Especially given AMD's price cuts leading up to release, the 5700 and the 5700 XT were solid performers that matched up well with the NVIDIA 2060 and 2070 and undercut the competition on cost at each tier. They were also fairly power efficient and the RDNA architecture offers features like Radeon image sharpening, Fidelity FX, and Radeon chill that provide real benefits to the end user. But, and this is a Kardashian size but, the reference models were the same old blower style designs that we've come to know and hate. The cards ran way too hot and were incredibly loud. So despite impressive gaming results, they were hard to recommend. And in the conclusion of my review video, I basically said that prospective buyers should just wait a month or so until partner models were available. Well, now is that time, and this is the first AIB RX 5700 XT to come through the office. Meet the MSI RX 5700 XT Evoke. MSI usually has a variety of different models and cooler styles for any given graphics card generation, but this is the first time that I've seen them use this kind of wraparound shroud design. It's certainly interesting, and the angular cutouts are a unique visual presentation, one that I think is kind of a love it or hate it thing. To preempt one of the most important questions, no, there are no LEDs on this card at all. Almost a refreshing change from what we were used to seeing, but I know that it might be a deal breaker for some shoppers. The shroud actually looks like something that you might expect to see from Sapphire rather than MSI with the fans inset into the flat unadorned metallic finish. The backplate is also simple and classic looking and continues the gold color with a flat black MSI logo on the right end. Power is provided by an eight pin and a six pin PCIe connector at the end of the card, which overall is much shorter than the reference design, but is taller and also bolters out a little bit past two slots, which might cause an issue for those with tight space requirements. The custom PCB design does allow the Evoke to run at a higher stock clock speed out of the box than the reference design. Average clocks after a 30 minute soak were 1949 megahertz versus 1881 megahertz for the blower cooler. I also did some overclocking and was able to get the Evoke running about 90 megahertz higher. But to be honest, overclocking on these Navi cards is still really poor. Third party software is giving me fits as messing around in MSI Afterburner caused system crashes with any kind of significant adjustment. As a result, I had to do everything in AMD's Wattman, which has gotten better, but is still not my favorite. I was able to get the Evoke stable at 2030 core frequency and a memory speed of 950, a 75 megahertz increase. Neither the core frequency nor the memory frequency improvements are impressive, and pushing any further resulted in an almost instantaneous system hang or crash. Applying this overclock also pushed our power requirements from 195 watts to 221 watts compared to the reference design, which used 192 watts under load. This isn't a huge uptick, but to compensate for the extra heat, the fans on the Evoke decided that they wanted to try to launch the card into orbit. Yes, this actually brought down operating temps, and this, I have to say, is, I guess, impressive, especially when you consider that the reference card runs a full 20 degrees warmer at stock settings already. But, holy shit was this card loud. Our reference cooler, which is already a problem acoustically, hit 51 decibels at load. 
Our overclocked Evoke was hitting almost 55 decibels without me even touching the fan curve. This is just the natural fan ramp. Yes, the stock result is better at 48.9 dBA, but this still isn't great for a dual axial fan graphics card with a custom PCB. After I took these readings, MSI got into contact with me and let me know that there is a BIOS that will be made available that reduces fan noise by a couple decibels. But the way that it does it is by running the fan slower. And as such, temps went up. So it's kind of up to you if you'd rather have a cooler, louder card or a warmer, slightly quieter one. I'm not sure why we can't have both. MSI has been making some really great GPUs recently with cooler and fan designs that run very quiet. And this is not one of those. Performance wise, the Evoke is slightly faster than the reference design. I ran through eight tests with different APIs to get kind of a representative sample of performance. And overall, there was a slight uptick in results. So you can see that overall the gaming performance of the MSI Evoque 5700 XT is still really solid at 1440p, but it doesn't separate itself in any meaningful way from the reference design. Again, overclocking is meager at best and only gave us an extra one or two FPS in most games at the cost of a huge amount of noise. When you compare the Evoque to the reference card at stock, it does run a lot cooler and a little quieter, but to be honest, that's the only real difference. Performance is comparable and the differences aren't really noticeable in real world scenarios at all. And frankly, I wouldn't overclock this card. It's just not worth it. I guess it comes down to this unique aesthetic if the Evoke is right for you. Do you need a gold graphics card basically? Well then you might be looking at your best and uh, maybe even your only option. Or if you need something that's significantly shorter than a reference PCB design, this also definitely works there. But I'm disappointed in MSI's cooler design. We've seen them do much, much better. And it's almost like they started with the unique shroud and worked backwards to make this without really concerning themselves with noise. It's just kind of an odd approach to things, I think. So what do you guys think of MSI's 5700 XT Evoke? Does the gold wraparound shroud do it for you? Or will you want to see what other partner model cards are released that maybe run a little bit quieter? Let me know down below in the comments. As always guys, thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.